find electric field everywhere. And so obviously we'll have to uh, find electric field in three regions. So let's uh, do it. Uh, let's no first let's label them. Let's label them. Uh, and I will use I'll probably use blue. <clears throat> so I will start with region one. It's inside inside of the hole. Then inside of the conductor region two and uh, region three will be outside of the whole structure. So let's start with region number one. All right, so let me put A. And we need to find electric field in the region one. It's absolute value. At this point, you should be able to guess which law I'm planning to use. Because we have nice spherical symmetry, it's a clear indication that Gauss's law will be pleasant to use. It will be a piece of cake, right? So we're going to use Gauss's law, right? So we're going to again write integral over the closed surface E dot dA uh, equals to Q enclosed over epsilon naught. And it's a spherical symmetry, so basically steps will be exactly the same like the steps we've applied uh, what uh, two classes ago when we yeah, applied Gauss's law to find the electric field inside of the uh, uniformly charged sphere and outside of a uniformly charged sphere. Exactly the same steps. But again, first of all, what? We need to pick a Gaussian surface. And the Gaussian surface must be in the region where you want to find the electric field. So it's here. Right, so of some arbitrary radius R small. Right, and of course you can draw uh, electric field, area vector. Because of the symmetry, of course, electric field will be radial. So all uh, those steps which we discussed. So now, of course, I'm not going to be as thorough as I was uh, back then. So uh, that's Gaussian surface. Let me even show that. That's our Gaussian surface. And, right, so I can write, I can make exactly the same steps, right? Okay, let me write in this uh, part. So, of course, first, uh, electric field will be, is, not will be, is in the same direction as the area vector. Of course, uh, this integral can be rewritten as E dA right vector signs disappear so now we just uh, we have a product of uh two magnitudes because again angle between these two vectors is zero cosine of zero one so we're getting that and so now because of the symmetry it doesn't matter where you are on this gaussian surface electric field strengths must be exactly the same because from that point if you look from any uh, point on this gaussian surface uh, distribution of charges which creates uh, electric field strengths exactly the same. So it's a clear indication that electric field, again, strength, electric field strength is constant. So I can continue. So I can write since E is constant on the Gaussian surface, so I can extract that out of the sign of integration. So you see, steps are the same. And uh, again, again, it's a calculus three integral, but we know the answer. Four pi r squared r small. Right. So it will be four pi r small squared. So uh, of course the answer, the value of this flux will be e times four pi r squared. And from the other side, it is equal to Q enclosed over epsilon naught. So that's what we got. You see the same steps. I just moved much faster. And so what's what's the value of Q enclosed? At this point, everyone should be able to see, right? So inside of this Gaussian surface, there is only one charge plus Q capital. So plus Q, and as a result, I can write immediately. So this equals to plus Q, and we can solve it for the uh, uh, electric field, 
Of course, I can write it as a function of r. So as a result, e as a function of r equals to uh, 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. Uh, okay, I can put q upstairs and downstairs will be uh, r squared in the denominator. Right. So that's the expression for the electric field uh, inside of the hole. Right. So it's just uh, uh, created by the uh, point charge effectively. Ah, you know what? Uh, I should add here, at least in the answer, it's a region one, E sub one. Okay, so now uh, second region, B, so E sub 2. Okay, who can tell me the answer? What will be the answer uh, in part B? Can you see that? Okay, I see the responses in, uh, in the chat. Exactly. It's like at the end of the previous class when, when I saw your answers, I was really somewhat depressed, right? But okay, now I see that you're getting it. Of course, region number two is inside of the conductor. And of course, uh, once you uh, dump this charge, once you position this charge plus Q at the center, you wait for a short period of time, maybe microsecond, maybe nanosecond, maybe picosecond, right? Uh, who knows? It depends on the mobility of electrons and so on. But you wait it long enough so that this conductor reaches what is called again the electrostatic equil equilibrium. And once conductor in that state, electric field inside of the conductor must be zero. Electrons will do whatever it's needed, but they will make electric field zero. Otherwise, they will never stop running. Right? So electric field in the second region is zero because it's a conductor. So in this case, we didn't have to do anything. We don't have to do anything. So uh, E2 equals to zero, and I will emphasize inside of, okay, the conductor. Okay, let me frame it. So that's the second region. And now the last one, the third one. So A, B, C. So we need to find electric field in the region number two. Now we are not in the conductor, now we are in the vacuum, right? And of course, electric field cannot be zero because there are conductors charged plus inside of the hole there is a charge, right? So there will be a more complicated picture. But we know how to handle that. Gauss's law, because we have nice uh, symmetrical distribution, so the application of Gauss's law will be probably the most pleasant experience, right? All right, and of course, you remember Gauss's law in general is the fundamental law. You can apply it to find the electric field of any electrical system, any, right? So again, Gauss's law, I will just write electric field, I mean, integral E dot dA equals to Q enclosed over epsilon naught. And again, first step, you have to pick a Gaussian surface. Again, the Gaussian surface must be in the region where you, found, where you want to find the electric field. And of course, it must match the symmetry, right? In order so we can utilize the symmetry, right? So it means that Gaussian surface will be somewhere out there, right? So over a Gaussian surface. Now maybe I can draw a big line so that's our Gaussian surface, of course, of some arbitrary radius r small, right? And again, this part will be exactly the same. So I will just write immediately e times 4 pi r squared. So it will be um, okay. Yeah, let me 
uh, e times 4 pi r squared equals to q enclosed over epsilon naught. And what's the value of an enclosed charge? Okay, I'll give you a few seconds. Think for yourself. What are you getting? What will be the total charge within the Gaussian surface? Charged physically embraced by our Gaussian surface. It's, it's again, it's straightforward, right? So I'm not trying to trick you, right? I'm just... Uh, <clears throat> Okay, some people think Q, right? Okay, think more. Be greedier. Why just Q? Grab everything possible. 2Q. No, be more greedier. No, no, you're not greedy enough. <laughs> Five, 3Q, right? Okay, guys, yeah, I convince you to be greedy, right? Uh, look, guys. That's why uh, yeah, I posed, right? Um, because you, you need to start thinking. It's like when I was, in, I was a student, right, in, uh, in the university in Ukraine, I remember our professor, mathematical analysis, uh, he would uh, call somebody to the board, he would volunteer somebody to the board, and a student would uh, try to take an integral of some limits, right, or something else, right, or maybe some differential equation, to the point, and the instructor would be just sitting and watching, right, till uh, the student get stuck somewhere right then we would start helping that student right trying to show him the direction right and then we will all get stuck and then the instructor would say okay erased up to that point and after that he would start guiding us explaining where we made a mistake what was wrong what's the better approach so at that time when we got stuck our brains were active really active uh, and we were just actively searching for a solution right so at that moment of course uh, it's much easier to accept the uh, correct directions right okay so q enclosed again just by definition what is enclosed charge it's a a total charge physically embraced by the Gaussian surface. So let's look. Gaussian surface is here. So we just need to count all the charges inside. Let's start from the very center. Definitely plus Q is there. So it must be included, must be counted. No charge left behind. So that's, that should be a slogan, right, uh, of this counting. No charge left behind. So plus Q. Then, uh, of course, uh, like what we discussed over there, some charge will be induced on this inner surface. Some charge will be left behind on this outer surface. Like uh, we can apply this logic like that logic in order to find that amount of charge. But do we have to do it here? Do we have to do that here? Because we know, because we know that the total charge inside of the conductor plus 2Q, so charge on the outer surface plus charge on the inner surface will be equal to plus 2Q. So all that charges is inside of our Gaussian surface. Of course, it's not uh, bad. You can find uh, the total charge on the inner surface, on the outer surface. You add them up and of course, 100% uh, I can guarantee that you will end up with charge plus 2Q. And you remember in the Gauss's law, when I introduced Gauss's law, I told you that uh, distribution of those charges inside of the Gaussian surface, surface doesn't matter for the Gauss's law. All right, you remember I told you I can grab this charge, move it slightly or maybe not so slightly, as long as that charge within the Gaussian surface counted in. All right? So, yeah, some charge will be on the outer surface, but it's inside of the Gaussian surface. Some charge will be on the inner surface, but again, it will be inside of the Gaussian surface. And we know the total charge of the conductor plus 2Q. So, I don't have to do that. I can write immediately plus 2Q. See that point? So, it will be plus uh, 2Q. So, it will be equal to plus 3Q. The logic is simple. 
But of course, we need to know how to apply uh, these laws, right? <coughs> right. Uh, if you're still confused, you tell me. Okay, so we just need to plug it and uh, solve for E. Okay, I will write immediately the answer. So E in the region number three as a function of R will be equal. So this is plus three Q. <coughs> then divided by uh, four pi epsilon naught times R to the power of two. So that's the uh, answer. for the region number three. So problem is solved. But of course, if on top of um, finding electric fields, you want to know <coughs> what's the amount of charge, total amount of charge on the inner surface or outer surface, yeah, we can apply this logic. Like we've done it over here. And you can do it quickly just in your head now, right? So since, uh, inside of the conductor there is a plus Q charge. Of course, on this interior surface there must be minus Q, right? And then uh, the next step you apply conservation of charge, the total charge plus 2Q. Uh, inner surface we just found minus Q. So it means that on the outer surface there must be charge plus 3Q. So plus 3Q minus q it will be plus 2q right so it's this plus 2q so q in the hole plus 2q inside of the conductor 3q right and from now on guys uh, on the exam read carefully which material uh, is given in the problem because i saw in the past uh, when i give uh, just a um, non-conducting material full of charges right for example sphere and i ask to find the electric field for example its side like dielectric material uh charged uh and find uh electric field inside and some students write okay inside uh the right electric field equals zero no 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 no. electric field like here equals zero only if a conduct if you if your material is a conductor but if the problem says a non-conducting material or dielectric material charged, right? So this is wrong for those cases, right? So it is only correct for conducting material. So read the problem carefully, which material is, uh, is there.